Hello everyone. Today, I'm excited to launch a brand new nine video series where we'll dive into Playtronica instruments to create interactive, multi-sensory experiences with Touch Designer. Playtronica offers a family of instruments that function as MIDI controllers, allowing you to transform everyday objects into triggers. Whether it's fruit, water, or even your own body, these instruments connect the physical world to the digital one using MIDI signals. In this first video tutorial, we'll cover the next topic. Chapter 1. What Playtronica is and how it works. Chapter 2. Connect Playtronica to Touch Designer. Chapter 3. Create visual material for an interactive experience using AI. Chapter 4. Create an effective yet simple interactive experience. Chapter 1. What Playtronica is and how it works. Playtron is a small device that turns any conductive object into a musical instrument. This could be fruit, water, plants, or even your hands. It connects to your computer, tablet, or phone via a USB cable and sends MIDI signals. So you can use it with any MIDI-compatible software or online synth. You can connect up to 16 objects using alligator clips. Each object can trigger a different sound, allowing you to create visual or sound experiences by simply touching things around you. This is great for interactive installations, performances. Let me show you how easy it is to set up. Step 1. Connect Playtronica to your device using the provided USB cable. If your device doesn't have a standard USB port, use an adapter. Step 2. Open your browser and test the connection by visiting the following website, synth.playtronica.com. To test, hold one of the ground pins with any hand. There are two ground pins on the lower corners of the Playtronica device. For a simple test, place your finger on the ground pin and, with your other hand, touch any of the inputs, which are the rectangular golden sections with two perforated circles. Step 3. Attach an alligator clip to the ground pin, which you will need to touch with your hand to close the circuit. Finally, attach another alligator clip to any input on the Playtron and connect it to the object you want to use as a trigger. And that's it. Your setup is ready. I never imagined I would say this, but reaching almost 7,500 subscribers has truly exceeded my expectations. I'm thrilled that so many of you are enjoying my content. However, 76.1% of viewers still haven't subscribed yet. If you find my videos helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It makes a huge difference in helping me continue creating more high quality touch designer tutorials. Let's work together to bring that number down. Chapter two, connect Playtronica to touch designer. Thanks to touch designers, incredible flexibility, connecting Playtronica to it is quite simple and practical. Let's go over how to do it in touch designer. You need to go to Dialog, select MIDI Device Mapper, and create a new mapping. Once you create the new mapping, a list will appear where you can select Playtron as the input. If you want to check whether the messages from this controller are coming through, right now I'm pressing Playtron, and I can see the necessary triggers are being activated. Perfect. Next, create a MIDI in. And in this component, you'll see the buttons reflected as I press them. For this example, I'll press all 16 buttons on Playtron to have them activated and show you a couple of things. Now, we have all 16 buttons. If you want, we can organize the channels here, arranging them in order. For example, I can call up another MIDI in. In this case, if I only want to use four of the 16 channels from Playtron, I can choose to keep only those four channels. Perfect, and if for some reason I need to use just one channel, I can reset the channels. I'll press Playtron again, and let's say I only need to use two channels in this case, and I'll stick with those later in our network. We will see how to create the logic to control what we are going to do next with Playtron. As part of this nine video series, I'm also creating a collection of conceptual VJ packs in 4K. I'll be making several throughout the season, and you can find them on my Patreon. Chapter three, create visual material for an interactive experience using AI. Before we continue, I'd like to share a quick thought. Some of you might be expecting to see advanced or uncommon techniques in Touch Designer, but instead, we'll use simple videos to create powerful results. Playtron is an incredible tool that adds an extra layer of depth to our installation's narrative. Incorporating everyday objects like plants or water into interactive art creates surprise and engagement. This multi-sensory approach adds a tactile element that traditional interfaces can't match, blending the organic and digital worlds in one experience. By turning familiar objects into triggers, the installation invites reflection on how we engage with the world. 
These objects also enhance the narrative and create stronger emotional connections through intuitive interaction. Since this is the first of a nine video series exploring Playtronic and Touch Designer, we'll start simple, creating an experience using pre-made videos. I'll use AI to generate two videos, state one and state two, and trigger their transition by touching simple rows. Step one, choose your favorite AI. In my case, I like working with Midjourney, but feel free to use any AI image generator you prefer. Since this video series is inspired by roses and orchids, I'll be using some prompts to create the images I need for the project. You can use the same prompts if you'd like, or experiment with your own. If you're not familiar with text-to-image AI tools, I highly recommend checking out tutorials on YouTube, where you'll find plenty of resources to get started. Step 2. Create your image and generate the first video. Once you've created the image, we'll use it to generate two videos. For the first video, called State 1, I want to simulate a natural movement for the rose, something subtle, like the wind gently causing some turbulence. To create this effect, I'll be using Runway with a custom prompt. The idea is to give the image a sense of life and motion, so feel free to adapt the prompt as needed to suit your creative vision. Step 3. Now, let's create the second video by using a different prompt but keeping the same metallic rose image. This time, the goal is to have the rose begin to bloom or grow, expanding out of the camera's frame. This will create a dynamic contrast with the first video. You can try experimenting with the simple prompt or adjust it to fit the theme you're going for. The key is to maintain the continuity between both videos. Now that we have both videos, the final steps in Touch Designer are straightforward. We'll use these two videos to create an interactive experience where, upon touching the trigger, in this case, a rose, we'll transition seamlessly between State 1 and State 2. Chapter 4. Creating a simple yet effective interactive experience. Perfect. This is the network we are going to work with. I'll give you a very brief summary because it's a really simple network, but it's effective for what we need to achieve. Essentially, in this section over here, we have the MIDI and operator, where it will recognize every time I press one of the buttons on the controller. This is the main section where we are capturing the input. The most important part is this small Python script right here, which I've written, and later on, I'll explain in more detail. But for now, just understand that this script allows me to choose between several different videos depending on the MIDI input. In the upper part of the network, we have the logic for video playback based on a switch operator. As I mentioned earlier, we have two states, one and two. The video you see here is the first video we created. When I press the button for step two, it triggers a transition between the two videos, switching from the first video to the second. We could add sound to this interaction or perhaps another type of interactivity, but for now, I'm going to stick to the basics and show you a few more examples of how it works. For instance, I have this other version of a rose here. It's really interesting because the rose is simply spinning in place. And when I click here to interact with it, now that we've covered that, let me guide you through how to build this simple yet effective interaction from scratch. We'll start by creating a MIDI in operator, which I'll place here in the network. After that, we're going to use two select operators. So let's place one here and then duplicate it to place another one just below. Perfect. Once we have those, we'll connect the select operators to a logic. Create two additional operators, so create a lag here. I'll create a null operator and place it right under the lag. Now, let's create a count operator and position it below that. Then, we'll add a chop execute to handle custom Python scripting based on the input values we receive. This will be the core of our interactive video switching logic. We're going to work on the video playback. Let's move over to the TOP operator section. I'm going to add a movie file in operator and place it here. After that, I'll duplicate it to have two movie files. We'll then connect them using a switch operator, which will allow us to transition between the two video files depending on the MIDI input. Lastly, we'll create an out so that we can view the output. Now we have both sections of the network ready. It's really straightforward, and if you want, you can add annotations here to keep things organized and label each section according to its function. Let's map the sum parameters. First, we'll go back to the MIDI and operator and ensure that our device is correctly mapped. In this case, the Playtron controller, which I've already configured, is recognized as device one in touch designer. Next, if I go ahead and press one of the buttons on the Playtron, the MIDI input will activate the channels we're using. For now, we're only using two channels, but this method is scalable for more inputs if needed. Now, let's move to the select operators. I'll isolate the channel 39 on the first select operator and channel 37 on the second select operator. With this setup, 
We have now successfully separated the two MIDI inputs, which will be routed to different logic paths in the network. In the logic operator, we'll leave the settings as they are, and you can use 0.5 in the lag operator. Since I have 14 videos to choose from, I'll set the count range from 0 to 14, ensuring that we can select between all available videos. Next, let's map the MIDI input to the video index. We'll use the lag operator to smooth out transitions between video changes, and we'll map this to the index position parameter of the switch operator. This makes sure that the video transitions are smooth when triggered by the MIDI controller. Now all that's left is to select the videos we'll be using. Remember, we have two states, state one and state two. I'm going to open each one of these and, to expand the example, I'll be using a total of 14 videos, which I'll show you later. For now, let's run a quick test with Playtron. If we use one of the MIDI channels, you'll see that the interaction successfully switches from state one to state two, completing the transition between the videos. Now, let's take a closer look at the Python code. The main function we're using is on value change, which triggers an action whenever the value of the input changes. The val variable represents the value read from the Playtron, and I've set the value to increase by one, so that the count starts from 1 to 14 instead of 0 to 13. Here's what's happening in the script. I've structured my videos into two folders, state 1 and state 2. And inside each folder, I've named the videos R1, R2, and so on for both states. This is important for the Python script because it allows me to dynamically reference the correct video based on the input. In the script, I'm generating a variable called video file and video file 2 which hold the file paths for the videos in state one and state two. I use Python syntax to concatenate the file path, ensuring that the script can find the video files based on the input received. Using the operator method, I then assign the correct file paths to the video operators in the network. For example, op state one par file will assign the file path to the first video and op state two dot par dot file will do the same for the second video. To verify everything is working correctly, I've added a print statement that will output the name of the video being played in both stages. If I press the buttons on my MIDI controller, you'll see the video titles change and the corresponding video will play in the output window. It's not necessary to use Python for this part. You can achieve the same result using a switch operator. However, if you'd still like to use the exact Python script from the example, you can find it in the free section of my Patreon. Additionally, if you want to take a closer look at the project in more detail, you can always find it on my Patreon where I'll also be including the 14 AI-generated videos I'm using in this example for you to test without any restrictions. This setup is extremely powerful and versatile, even though it's built using only about 10 operators. It showcases how combining simple input from a controller like Playtron with the capabilities of Touch Designer can lead to highly creative and immersive experiences. This project could be scaled to something as large as an immersive room installation, a video mapping projection, or even an interactive art installation in a botanical garden. While you're seeing it on a flat screen here, this technique can be adapted to create large-scale, physical, and multi-sensory installation. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or join the discussion.